What's good, everyone? I'm excited to bring to you two of my favorite people in the world, and oh, and they're recurring guests. Actually, they're re they're returning guests. We have Jackie Shaw, who is a creative entrepreneur. She's also a coach, and she's. I just want to acknowledge you, Jackie, for your consistency. Um, we've been how long have we been over a year now, right? We've been meeting every was it every other week, so. Really appreciate your partnership. And Santa Victorio, who is, so we're doing an episode. So you're um, a sales professional and you are uh, a coach as well. And, and a sales coach, just to confuse things a little uh, bit more. And a public speaker and speaker. so much more. And a international, distinguished international uh, Toastmaster, right? Oh, yes, Toastmaster. Yeah. I forgot I did that too. I do so many things. Yes. And uh, I know we met through uh, BNI, which is Business Network International, and excited to have you here. So we're, today we're going to talk about being an ENFP, which is which is stands for Extrovert Intuition, Feelings, and Perception, right? Yeah. And can I go a little high level? As oh, to yes, yes. Talk, yes. This is what we're great at. Um, and cheers, we're drinking because ENFPs love to party. Um, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> All personality types love to party. Um, mm -hmm. So we're talking about ENFP, which is a personality type on the Myers-Briggs scale, which has 16 personality types. And so you get rated on four different scales. So you can be introverted versus extroverted, we're extroverted. You can be sensing versus intuitive, which means like details, facts, and like ideas, concepts, we're intuitive. We don't like details and facts. Um, and <laughs> Two other ones. Facts. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that, that's a hashtag fact. <laughs> <laughs> and then the two other ones are feelings versus thinking. Uh, we like our feelings. And then lastly, perceiving versus judgment. So like perceiving is open-ended, spontaneous. Mm. Judgment is like structured and wow. really oriented. You're pretty good at this. Yeah, that that I was really that. Well, well, well said. I feel like you, you definitely have... I'm curious, like... When you guys read your first um, ENFP, like, did it really call to you? Did it speak to you? I'm trying to think back, but definitely. I, I remember the feeling of like, oh my God, I'm actually one of 16 personalities. Like, I'm not that special. <laughs> <laughs> it was my first reaction. Um, but as I was reading into it, like, I thought it was really funny about... Um, the fascinating thing about personality tests is that like it's also how you can relate to somebody else right and um yeah. as i was saying even before we started this you know i'm kind of in a lower modality to kind of in a low mood and um but at the same time i know having another enfp santa on this call like we can definitely pump each other up so it's really funny depending on who you're interacting with um that that personality really like shows up and and yeah conquers almost right <laughs> oh yeah our personality takes up a lot of space <laughs> <laughs> let's just say that well, yeah. well speaking of which do you think i'm sorry i keep wanting to take in at high level for like people who aren't as obsessive as me because i'm like super obsessive and i want to make sure people who aren't yeah. obsessed they know what we're talking about before we go into yeah. the nitty-gritty so like, how would you describe an ENFP in your eyes? Like, what do you think an ENFP is? You want to go first, Jackie? That's almost a trick question, right? Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think you described it really well when you did the breakdown. Um, it's very much uh, a personality that is much more on the feeling, intuitive side, um, high energy. Um, loves being around other people and actually takes that energy and is more inspired by it than anything. Um, mm -hmm. And can, I think the, the name, the, the name that of an ENFP is campaigner, right? That's like the, oh, yeah. the other name of it. Um, and that fully describes who, who I believe I am at some mm -hmm. points, right? Like when it depends on like the situation, but a lot of times, like I'm the one who is like, coming up with the new ideas and wanting to go forth with this new idea with a lot of energy and everything um, and yeah. a lot of excitement too. So that's how I see it. 
um, Davidson. I don't know if you know so much about us. But <laughs> well, you know, you know, it's funny. This this is a perfect story of an ENFP like talking with another ENFP. When Jackie reached out to me to talk about the program AC, like before she did the program, I think we were on the phone for like two hours, right? And we were just like, <laughs> it was just crazy. We were just vibing off of each other. But um, yeah, really well said. Um, I think yeah, ENFPs are really good at like making, having fun and, and bringing people together. So building communities, um, connecting the dots and connecting people together. And, you know, we're exciting people. I think one of the misperceptions is that people think that we're not like philosophical, but I think we can get deep as well and we can get, um, and I think sometimes we, because we're giving so much of our energy, we can burn out as well. So I think one of the, I'm sure we'll get into it, but self-care, I think it's huge for ENFPs. Heck yeah, I totally agree. Everything that you both said, exactly and i also have a tendency every time i talk with jackie like i'll call jackie and i'll be like hey jackie i just need some social connection for like five minutes next thing you know we've been on the phone for four hours we've <laughs> talked about everything from like social activism to coaching mm. to business and just like everything in between so Love that's it. like a thousand percent um but if i can add one more thing like i kind of think we're a golden retriever of um social personalities yeah <laughs> and like what i mean by that is that like we love everyone and we get so excited and but i think like okay so like we go up to people and we love people and we're like oh my god i'm so happy to meet you wag 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 you know like super excited Aww. um and then you know like we see another person and we're like oh, i want to love you i want to love we just like want to love everyone um but the uh, thing is is like we're super loyal like whoever our person hmm. is you know we're super loyal like a german chef so maybe we're like a German Shepherd Golden Retriever cross, um, <laughs> but I think that's what we totally do. And I think most people love us too. Like most people love Golden Retrievers mm. and German Shepherds. They're very likable breeds, and I think we're very likable personality types. I might be totally biased, but <laughs> on the whole, only biased <laughs> with you. But I agree. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know what's interesting? I actually want to. I used to think that like. ENFPs had trouble committing to relationships, actually. But I think if we're like a fully sourced, like fully functional, like at the core, like when we're in our best selves, like we can be. But I guess I can only speak for myself. When I was a lower ENFP, I, I definitely, it was hard for me to really commit into a relationship because I was always seeking something better, you know? So Yeah, when there's something missing. Right. Because I think that's the thing when we're like passionate about something then there is no holding back which i think is another yeah. misconception like i don't know if you had this experience when you were a kid but like when i was a kid all my teachers thought i had adhd because i couldn't focus and i feel like <laughs> most you know feeds as kids their teachers were like all right put them on some type of drug <laughs> they cannot focus yeah. um, and the thing is is like it's not that we can't focus we just haven't found anything that excites us fully and like when we do mm -hmm. find that thing we're all in mm -hmm. And yeah. it's so true with like relationships. Like when we find that person right. who can hold all of us and we're like really multifaceted, then yo, we're getting married right away. Mm. I love that. I also do want to add too, I think it's also because we love everything. We have so many different interests and hobbies and there's so many things that we're interested in and want to know so much about, right? So yeah. that it's it, um, it seems sometimes that we can be unfocused, but at the same time mm. we, I believe that like we're we're able to focus on many different things, yeah, um, to a different standard than other people. But that's that's my belief. <laughs> I think a funny story about this being an ENFP is that I remember like I was kind of explaining. Someone's like, "What is it like to be you, Davidson?" And I was like, "Well, I could be listening on the sales floor. Like there'll be like eight teammates like talking on the phone with others, and I'm like listening to all eight people at the same time. They're like, that sounds like a superpower. I'm like." Really? Because the way I, like, I thought it was, like, the opposite of that. Because I'm, like, trying to focus on the task at hand. But here I am literally listening to, like, all the conversations around me. So, I don't know. It's, like, a curse and a blessing. I totally have that, too. I also work in sales. And sometimes I'm on the sales floor and I'm, like, talking to my clients. And then, you know, obviously before COVID. And I'm, like, I need to go into another room because yeah. I'm listening to the dude who's, yeah. like, 20 <laughs> feet away from me. <laughs> Yep. this is so hard speaking of distractions um <laughs> i don't know if you just heard that buzzard 
Uh, <laughs> but but Jackie, I feel like you're since you're creative, I feel like you have you can focus, right? Like, was that just like a skill that you really had to practice, or? I think that like it depends, like what we're all saying, which is if you, something really interests me, then I can totally uh, focus on it, right? Okay. It's really picking amongst all the things that I'm interested in. What is it? It, that, that I'm like most attracted to right now in this instance. And yeah. then when I'm in that, I can be in flow, I'm totally focused mm. and I'm totally, you know, passionate about it. And I'm so excited that I want to share it with everyone around me um, yeah. to get other people excited about it. So um, I do believe that it is possible. It's just, it has to be the thing that you want to focus on in that moment. Mm. Do, do you think, um, I think being ENFP is great for fundraising. Like when I fundraise for my nonprofits, like I'm like a freaking animal. I, I guess, uh, do you feel like sometimes like people think like, like people are afraid of doing that thing, but for you, it just comes so naturally. But for others, they're like, I would never be able to do that. Like how you just approach random people and how you can kind of like be able to juggle, like talking to like 20 different people in, in one, you know, one event, for instance. Maybe the word still goes back to passion. I feel like when you're passionate mm. about something, it doesn't even matter that you have to talk to people or or do something mm. that you've never done before, or you don't even think about those things, right? Like for me, I know for sure that like when I have something on my mind, that is all I can think about. And I, I want to do everything in my power to make it work. Um, so for someone who's in fundraising and probably has a personality type of, um, you know, an ENFP, I, I do believe that like, they're, they're the ones who are out there and coming up with new ideas and, and talking to more people. And they probably really enjoy talking to people at the same time. Um, mm. And that gives them more energy as well. So I can see people being really, really good at fundraising for sure. And if I can also add something to that too, you know, I think when we think of personality types, it's different strokes for different folks meaning like personality types who might be very different from us might look at fundraising or something that's very like social oriented or vision oriented where you have to galvanize folks which is what our strength is and they might say oh heck no tech no i would never do anything like that but yeah. people who have different personality types from us we look at what they would do and they're absolutely thriving in that function yeah. and we would be like i'd rather dive than do it <laughs> be like data entry yes straight oh stuff God. like okay if it's a function of the job like you know very small sliver and i get to talk to human beings like yeah i'll get yeah. it done but if it's the only thing i do all day every day no way jose we're not doing that <laughs> like so yeah. true yeah anything with excel or like data like when i had data entry jobs like earlier on in my career it was i it was the death of me like i literally I think I, I got up and drank water every 10 minutes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I can relate so much. Same. It, it's making me think back way back when I used to work in offices um, as a graphic designer and everything. And I would get up to uh, just go to the kitchen to grab water or snacks. And I would just like stand in the kitchen and talk to people all day. Every day. <laughs> I get my work done, but at the same yeah. time, like that was like my favorite place to be because I knew people were coming in and out and that I would get to talk to you and interesting people. Hmm. Exactly. I'm curious, like you mentioned ADHD. So I, I guess I'm diagnosed with ADHD technically. Do you think it's just that our, our education system doesn't have like a more interactive, like a more like a modern way of dealing like, or I guess supporting people who are more like hands-on and more interactive, you think? I do think this, and I have a very personal opinion, and I want to preface this by saying this personal opinion is not endorsed by any company that I am related to. <laughs> <laughs> so let me first say that. Touché, touché. Um, but I think my personal opinion is that our education system has not changed since the industrial revolution. And yeah, yeah it made sense to have this non-immersive, non-interactive environment with one instructor to 30 people back then. But we move so much quicker now. We have technology, mm. which is helping us think quicker. So we're just not being stimulated enough. Yeah. Um, but like to the first question, I'm like, 
do we have ADHD because we're an ENFP or are we an ENFP because we have ADHD? Um, that's the real question that I'm interested in. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> right now, I'm like, my mind is kind of blown. Um, I never thought of myself as having ADHD. So, oh, okay. you know, relating the personality type to that, I'm like, huh. Hmm. That's really interesting. There is this like unfocused quality sometimes with it. So and this yeah. jumping around and like um, the golden retriever energy, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, yeah. And that is really interesting. So maybe so some people are misdiagnosed. It's just a personality thing. Well, well, I think you would you both would appreciate this. So I read a book called The Edison Gene, and it talks and basically it's like the ADHD gene. But the reason I think I was like, it totally related with me because I'm like, whoa, I can come up with ideas like and execute on them like so easily. And I was like, oh, if we were able to reframe it instead of calling everyone ADHD and calling it like a disorder. But it's like, no, you have this gift of idea generation and creativity and you have the ability to, you know, just go after whatever and just, take, you know, I think. If, I think if we were to relate to children like in that positive way, they would they would feel like, wow, this is a superpower instead of like, oh man, like I, I suck, you know? I totally agree. I used to work with school age children and I completely empathized with all the children who had ADHD because I was like, yes, I was in the same shoes. And they loved me because I've just listened to them talk about like a thousand different topics within 10 minutes. And I'm like, yeah, that's really interesting. And I'm following where you're going. Um, <laughs> and I just think it's such a shame because those children are so intelligent. Like the fact that they can make such quick connections. And mm. I know there's like two main types of thinking. There's like lateral thinking and then vertical thinking. I don't know, whatever. There's up and down, there's side to side thinking and up and down thinking. And um, if you ask a psychologist, most psychologists say like lateral thinking is less work for the brain. Therefore, you're less intelligent to do that, which I think is absolute bullcrap. I think it is yeah. so amazing that children with ADHD and ENFPs can make such quick connections. And how that plays out in this world is that we're super connectors between people, like we're great matchmakers. In yeah. addition to that, like we understand so many different types of people, we can hold so much space and we can actually see things from different angles because our mind has gone there. Um, and we can talk about most topics and we can carry all conversations. Like you'll never have dead air with an ENFP. <laughs> so if I'm gonna drop a mic, I'm gonna drop it now and say <laughs> that it is a superpower to have ADHD. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Yeah, there's so much you just said there, right? I, I think it is cool because I think we um, can, like, we're the life of the party, right? Like, we, like you, if you invite an ENFP to a party, you don't have to worry about, like, we can take over as a host. And, like, I'm sure, <laughs> like, when I used to host the happy hours, like, it was so natural. Like, for me, like, this is fun. But for people, they're like, I don't know how you get, you probably hear this a lot, both of you. Like, oh, I don't know how you do that. Like, I don't know how you have the energy to do that. It gives us energy. It does. It's just so much fun to connect people and connect with people. Um, I can imagine, you're right. Many, many times I've taken over as the host of a party <laughs> because <laughs> I just want to have fun and I, I believe everyone should have fun around me. Um, so it is funny. I can imagine the times I, I was at, at like networking events and I just like bounce around the room, just meeting people and just having a really, really great time while other people are just like standing in the corner and just like staring at me like, yeah. and stuff. Yeah. But um, it's true. We can pretty much talk to anybody about anything. Um, and going back to Santa's point about like those connections and being able to mm. make connections quickly in the mind. Um, mm. Yeah, I think even with conversation, right, we can talk about one thing and it can lead to another thing. And it could be about the past, present, future, all of it. Um, any topic can be related <laughs> if we think about it long enough. Yeah. And do you, do you feel like um, sometimes it can also be a distraction? Like... <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> The example that comes to mind is I used to work at a co-working space and um, I love going in and just talking to people, but sometimes it could be distracting from my work because I would rather talk to people all day yeah. than actually do the work. Um, yeah. So a hundred percent, it could be a distraction. <laughs> so, are you, so do you guys have like really good structure around like calendar management where 
you just you schedule everything so that you because I, I i find sometimes like i'll schedule it in but i'm like i would rather do this thing <laughs> 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 something i'm actually passionate about so. it's a flexible structure for me yeah. like it's always a structure because in some cases i really do need the structure right so to be able to get things done and to be able to get things that are important for me done really right and then at the same time it's not so rigid to the point that like i don't allow myself um a break here or or to do something else in that time period or switch it with something else if i can add one thing i think is another trait of our personality is that we're so idealistic <laughs> and so sometimes I schedule my calendar being so idealistic I'm like okay this task is only going to take me 10 minutes and then I'm going to have the energy to do this task and then yeah. that task and that task and then like I look at my calendar and I'm like wow there is no room to breathe because yeah. I scheduled it in like that idealistic mindset so I have a love-hate relationship with my calendar um, it's so bad so bad I started this thing where it's just like focus on one thing a day. Mm -hmm. If you don't get anything else done today, Jackie, you do this one thing. Um, because like you said, I could, I, idealism is the word in many ways, yeah. right? But with time, especially, it's like, oh, I can get this done for sure within an hour. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know it takes eight hours to do. <laughs> exactly. It took eight hours because we got distracted. And because we like <laughs> decided we wanted to talk to people. Oh, we, we got another business idea in between. And we're like, oh, <laughs> let's follow through on that instead. <laughs> let's see where that takes us. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, it's, it's like... It's interesting because like it's like it's such a blessing sometimes right because like you know you'll have fun and like you're you're good at like spur of the moment like spontaneity I think some people they go on vacations they have to plan like every everything but for us like we can we can thrive in an environment where like just just put us in a new country and we'll explore right where some people like the thought of that like will be scary for them you know they're like no 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 like we need to plan out ahead what to do a thousand percent and i think the reverse happens for us like if things are too planned out and it yeah. wasn't planned out from us the idealist who made it you know we can do it but <laughs> oh if it's told to us by someone else because i think that's another thing about a person i've obviously read about this i'm so obsessed because i think that like we're literally the best one um <laughs> so just i'm just kidding <laughs> Everyone is the best. I really love our type. And I love all I do not believe what you just said. <laughs> yes, it's so true. And then uh, I'm a Leo. Wait, are, is anyone else a Leo? Because that also, okay. When you read like the Leo tra traits, it's also very ENFP as well. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm a, a Leo cusp. So maybe I have a little, I mean, I'm wearing a sparkly shirt. Maybe I am a Leo. <laughs> <laughs> oh but i was just gonna say really quick another thing that we hate is like authority and being told mm. what to do yeah so like if someone made a schedule or an itinerary for me i'd be like absolutely not this is not happening <laughs> yeah <laughs> so bad C contrarian do you do you both have like contrarian type of like vibes too i know for me like i definitely resist um a lot of that stuff what does contrarian mean like playing devil's advocate all the time oh i feel like sometimes i have it within myself i don't even need another person to be involved <laughs> <laughs> that's deep <laughs> like oh i need to do this thing nah i'm just gonna go play instead <laughs> That is a good question. Like, what do you what do you think is one of the most challenging things about being an ENFP? I know we kind of like talked about some of them, but like specifically for you, I think sometimes it's the execution piece, um, executing all the way through. Yeah. In like a time frame. Seeing it through from from top to finish. Top to finish in a specific time frame uh in the time frame can, yeah yeah i think that can actually be very challenging um yeah you know i i like to say that like i'm an ideas person so I, i'll come up with a million ideas of how to do it and everything and then i'll i'll start some of it but 
I think the perfect partnership is to have somebody who um, I can run these ideas through and process through yeah. so that they actually become reality versus just ideas that are like somewhat done, you know? Mm. Uh, so that could be a challenge at times, definitely. Yeah. What about for the two of you? Yeah, to piggyback off of what you just said, Jackie, I think that's a challenge and it could also be one of the greatest rewards depending on the circumstance because we make great leaders. Like we can oversee a team, we can galvanize them, we can connect them to the vision, but we would be so bored and we would be doing the world a disservice if we actually did the work ourselves. <laughs> I swear it's not a cop out. I to love that. Like Andy, but that sounded so bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that, that's hilarious, but so true. Yeah, yeah it's like, yeah. and you know, and this is why there are other types of personalities who would like hate to make the vision, would hate yeah. to uh, actually lead people and persuade people and to get them excited, right. and they would be like, no, just put me in a repetitive task that has continuity, and I will yeah. keep but. but that's not us. Like we yeah. give them the vision, we give them the fun. Um, so <laughs> exactly, exactly. So we can pump life back into something that like kind of mm. dies down if we're talking about work, right? Sometimes, like if For it's sure. a long vision or a long like project and everything, we can be the ones who come in with new ideas and hey, let's do it this way. Or like, do you remember like this is why we started off with it in this first place and. This is why we're excited about it, and this is why we're even doing it. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have a question for both of you. So, how many projects, or and what projects have you abandoned recently? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'll start off. I I, I recently finished uh, like the my real estate course uh, for the second time and decided not to go through with it. <laughs> So that's both. And then I also only had like a, a few classes left in my MBA and I was like, fuck this, I don't need this. Mm. <laughs> How about oh you guys? God. Oh my God. I don't even know where to begin. <laughs> you want to jump in first. Oh my God. Well, I'll let's just say in the last week, like five times. Like, wow. It's so bad. I've like changed my niche like four times in the last week. I've changed my focus of my sales book like 10 times in the last week. Oh my God. It's just so bad. And like before I knew I was an ENFP, I was like, oh my God, I'm just so lazy. What is yep. wrong with me? But yeah. no, it's just like I get super pumped up. And then, you know, that only lasts a little bit and then I get bored. <laughs> <laughs> I can even think of just like books in this last month or uh, after last month that I did not complete just because I was just like, hmm, I'm moving on to the next one. <laughs> I've had enough. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys feel like the same way with like, like friends? Like, I don't know about you. I think I'm trying to be better about this, but I have like a lot of friends, but sometimes like I'm really quick to move on to like a different friend, <laughs> you know? It's like, let me let me learn about this new person that just started this program or whatever, you know? Instead of like really doubling down on my existing like friendships, you know? That's the golden retriever part. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> totally. Well, but a golden retriever is also very, very loyal, right? So I think it's both, right? Um, new people definitely excite us. New people in our realm, it's like, oh my God, who are you? Tell me everything about you. <laughs> <laughs> Can we be friends and stuff? And then yeah. also when it comes to like old friends, you know, knowing someone really, really deeply and knowing mm -hmm. someone in a new way is very, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, like I don't know about both of you, but I believe we all do this where it's like yeah. if we're going to have a conversation with our close friends it's not going to be about the same thing over and over again we're mm. never going to like have it just be a surface level kind of conversation we want to know more things we want to understand other things we want to bring more excitement into their lives as well um <laughs> whatever is new in our life we're going to bring into somebody else's life mm. Jackie, what you just said made me click something huge click in my mind, which is that like, yeah, we have both sides, you know, we love meeting new people and we're also very loyal. And when I think about like who I've been loyal with, it's like the people that uh, expand and grow at the same pace as me. Like I've had friends who've expanded a little too quickly and I'm like, oh, I can't keep up with you. And then I've had friends who like contracted or don't expand and I'm like, all right, 
love you, but peace out, Cub Scout, uh-huh. you know, and we, and we leave, but that totally just clicked mm-hmm. for me because what you said. That, that dude, uh, you just verbalize that so eloquently. Yeah. Cause I think you're right. Like I always feel guilty cause I'm like, oh, maybe, but then like you said, maybe they're just not expanding as quickly as, as uh, I would like, or as, as I am. So it's harder to, um, relate to some of the stuff if it's like the same things. But maybe that's why we we all still are in communication and we're still friends because like we're all in this work of self development so we're always growing. Um, that's, mm-hmm. that's deep. Yeah. I also think like with people, any relationship has seasons, right? So like yeah. sometimes like yeah. it's it's summer, it's fun. This is the person you're seeing all the time. You're also maybe physically in contact with them all the time. Um, so they're in your lives. And then there's some seasons that are much more quiet. It's winter, right? And you don't see them for some time, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they've just completely dropped off out of our lives. It's just, we know it's going to come back around. There's a cycle mm. to it. Mm. So true. And speaking of, se- oh, sorry, go ahead. David. Oh, no, no, no. What were you going to say? I'm surprised this is the first time two extroverts have run into each other. I was like, this is going to be so hard. Three extroverts, we're going to just crash into each other. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too, yeah. I know, I'm so proud of us. We should have talking sticks. All right, my turn. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, But I was going to ask, like, how are you both finding being an extrovert in the pandemic? Like, how does it feel to be an extrovert right now? It's tough. It's really hard. Um, so I leave my home a couple times a week uh, to go into a um, studio for for ceramics, essentially. And mm. I do it for my own sanity. Like, it's the only other place I really go to besides like supermarkets and, you know, other things. But I don't really see that many friends during this time. Um, and I have Zoom fatigue as well. So uh, yeah. that's been really hard. Um, never thought I could get Zoom fatigue since I love talking to people all the time, <laughs> but it has happened. Um, so being able to go somewhere and see new people and also do something completely uh, new and different and learn a new skill set has been really good for my soul. Otherwise, mm-hmm. I would say I kind of die a little inside. There was a couple mm-hmm. of months where I was like kind of dying inside where I'm like, okay, yeah. self-care time. It's great concentrate on the self, concentrate on what's going on in my mind and, and, Mm. you know, um, place new structures, but really I think depression kind of set in (laughs) at the same time. Um, so it's been hard, I would say. Um, and I can't wait, I can't wait to be able to like see people again. I mean, Santa and I, we were just talking about like, as soon as we're both vaccinated, (laughs) we're going to have to mix in the park and everything. Um, so, yeah. What about for you? Uh, yeah, I'll go really quickly. Uh, yeah, I, like it's been super tough, right? Like, I think I met someone once at a networking event, and they're like, "I think you might be the most extroverted person I've ever met in my entire life." And I was like, "Oh, thank you." <laughs> but I think there's some truth to that, you know? Like, it, it's been really challenging for me. Um, and it, it, Jackie seems like you're you're pretty creative, so I think like you've always been able to kind of give yourself space to be creative. But I think that was like a new muscle for me to flex. Um, and I think the space has provided me like an opportunity to be like, why am I so attached to humans? Like, why can't I just walk by myself with myself and be okay with nothingness and stillness? Right. So I, I really saw it as an opportunity. But yeah, you're right. I mean, I did go through like depression. I, I was a victim. I, I made it mean that, you know, oh, you know, my in-laws are trapping me here. And like, I made, I had a story around like, oh, like, you know, they don't, you know, I was blaming others instead of really just taking responsibility and just like owning like, okay, like what's so bad about like me, you know, just myself without others having to validate my, my worthiness and stuff like that. Oof, a thousand percent. I'm the third person here to say depression for sure. And and having that story of like, ooh, life shouldn't be this way. I, I should be seeing people every single day. And, you know, prior to the pandemic, we did see people every single day. Like the world was built for extroverts. It's, <laughs> it's an extrovert's world. And all of a sudden it got like flipped upside down and like seeing people via Zoom is not the same at all. 
Um, yeah, we get Zoom fatigue, like you mentioned, uh, Jackie, and it's just like, no, I physically want to be with people. So it's also been very hard for me. And then I also took on the challenge during the pandemic. Davidson, you know this, obviously, and, and Jackie, you know this, that um, I took on the challenge to live by myself as an extrovert during the pandemic. Um, so yeah. I've had to be very proactive in getting social time, especially working from home, which has felt very lonely as an extrovert. Um, and then also being okay with my own company, which as you said, Davidson, I never flexed that muscle before. I'm like, wait, what? I think these thoughts or I do those things or this is who I am when I don't hang out with other people. Um, but it's kind of been like nice. You know, I know I could have done it and I will never take social gatherings for granted ever again. I can't wait for the first like party of 50 people. <sighs> It's going to be the best day of my life as long as everyone's <laughs> vaccinated um but yeah it's just been such a crazy time i think there's like a meme that says like check on your extrovert friends they're not okay and it's <laughs> so true we're not okay send help <laughs> well it is interesting right because it's our greatest strengths but it kind of makes you wonder like what had it be this way like was it we were born like this or was it because of certain circumstances like we need this like like the stim like simulation or stimulation to kind of like feel whole you know it's it's an interesting topic and concept well all human beings need bonds with each other it's just i guess how how tired do you get from it right when i think of an introvert right it, it's like there is a limit of how much uh time they have with someone else before they have to go home and recharge and just be by themselves um doing whatever it is that they need to do like it's almost the opposite for us. It's like when we're with someone, we're actually charging up. So mm -hmm. during this pandemic, it's been very much like depleting <laughs> versus charging up. Um, and so we have to look for those those moments where we can charge up whenever we can. Um, and I, I think it's, it, you know, it's, they're both part of human nature. We still need bonds with other people. Um, it's just how do you get it and how do you, react to it especially afterwards yeah it's 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 deep i mean i've thought about this like myself like do you both think like there were something that has happened in the past that has made you into an enfp because i don't necessarily think i grew up that way right i think once i felt comfortable i became but at one point like when i was really young i was like actually pretty like introverted and then i think i was trying to like fix that and I was just in the constant mode of fixing. So everything that I am now, it was basically the opposite of what I used to be when I was like a little child. Oh, that's so interesting. Um, I think as we age, like we might integrate other traits. Like we all have, you know, the ability to be introverted or sensing or thinking or judging. And like, as we get older and like, the literature, aka 16personalities.com, the literature, <laughs> um, it says that like when we turn 30, like we start to like better integrate those traits and we can like better flex them. Uh, but that's so interesting that at a, as a kid, you were like, all right, I'm swinging to the other side. When you say you were an introvert, do you mean like you were shy or that you needed to be alone to charge like up? I was voted most reserved, like in, in, well, this was like in fifth grade. And then I think, I mean, I, I do notice like a lot of the stuff I do now from public speak, like, you know, Toastmasters to hosting happy hours and stuff. And like, you know, being a leader, fundraising and stuff like was all skills like I've like developed. Like, I think when I was like much, I think a lot of the stuff that I tried, I was like trying to be the opposite because I felt like I, I didn't have a lot of friends. So like I'm like, let me just make a game and try to make as many friends as possible. And that kind of became my story but I didn't always like grow up like when I was younger I wasn't all of these traits I don't think feelings probably I always I was always a crybaby but others have <laughs> that's not what it means I'm still a crybaby oh my god although I am a crybaby <laughs> for sure Jackie we love to cry it's the reason we joined our coaching program Holy, so everything makes me cry. I'm happy I cry. I'm sad I cry. I'm angry I cry. When I'm numb, I cry. Why am I not yeah. feeling anything? <laughs> <laughs> but that's so interesting because I have always wondered that too about like 
are you born with the personality like Maybelline? Mm. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's Maybelline. Or is it given to you through your family and your experience? Uh, well, I guess family would cause you to be born with it. Like, is it nature or is it nurture? Mm. Um, and I always wonder too, because I grew up with an, ex- an introverted brother. And from day one, and I know that I'm extroverted and my parents are extroverted. And like from the time he could speak, my brother was always at like eight o'clock. He was like, all right, guys, peace out. I've had enough. (laughs) I'm going to go to bed now, (laughs) be by myself, recharge. So sometimes I think like, man, is it like you grew up with this trait? Like, you know, from a very young age and he's remained that way too. And the thing is he always Mm -hmm. grew preserved and he's still an introvert where he needs to come back home and like recharge and be alone and be with his own thoughts and feelings. But, you know, he can hold a conversation very well. He's not reserved anymore. He's like more outgoing. He can get along with most people. So I think we start to, um, to move in to each more as we age, but I don't know if it's nature or nurture. There's probably a white paper out there besides 16personalities.com. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of different personality um, tests out there, right? Um, mm-hmm. I'm sure they're all like trying to, you know, figure this kind of thing out. Um, it's probably a little bit of both, right? For mm-hmm. both of us and for all of us. <clears throat> and when I think of it, you know, like as a kid, I would say I was shy, but I definitely loved being around people. And mm-hmm. Um, so that has followed me all the way through. Um, not that I'm very shy these days, but I, I tend to think, you know, when I was younger, I was like, oh, the shyness is an introverted thing, but that's not necessarily the case. I think it's Mm. two separate things that we're talking about. Hmm. Yeah. I guess being voted most reserved, like that's not a very ENFP type of thing, you know? So I guess that's (laughs) that's why it was just like surprising to... Um, but yeah, it's a, it's a deep topic. Hmm. Super deep. Yeah, well, this has been an awesome conversation. I think we should have part two because I feel like there's like so much to talk about. And I think a lot of people will resonate with a lot of what we're saying, a lot of ENFPs. I have so many more questions. So let's definitely do a part two. I would love that. And I think um, I, I have my personality test somewhere. I saved it yeah. somewhere. And now I'm really curious. I'm gonna look it all over again and like get really into it. I remember even when I was taking the test years ago, I was so into it that I went and told all of my friends. Yeah. And I actually took the test as some, some of my friends so I can see how I related to them. And yeah, then, yeah. I got everybody excited. So ENFP all the way through, even for That's the test. Hilarious. So. <laughs> through and through you're an enfp yeah <laughs> that's awesome and um i guess Wait, like davidson can i ask you a question yeah are, are you wrapping up because you're getting bored <laughs> <laughs> no so so my wife is gonna come down to use the peloton and oh, okay. i mean if you guys are okay with me pausing it and then we can continue upstairs like you know <laughs> I, was just, I was just teasing you because you know how we get bored as enfps we're like all right the next shiny object <laughs> yeah i that does happen pretty often but um i think the pet like you guys were kind of we were kind of joking about this earlier but episode 116 right i think like like you both have been saying like once if you're passionate about something like we, we can make it happen, but yeah, there's 90%, 90% of everything else that I'm kind of like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, like even trying new dishes, for instance, like I love trying new restaurants and stuff like that. And a lot of people, they're pretty cool with just eating the same thing every day. <laughs> exactly. We need that novelty. Yeah. yeah. It's fun. It makes our heads go like, whoa. <laughs> it's like a yeah. party get there. And then we get to a point where we burn out because we're like, what's the meaning of life? <laughs> from thing to thing to thing. That's so true. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> that is a deep, like, what do you, if, if we were to bring that question back to you, like, what do you think the meaning of life is? Oh, this is actually such an ENFP question because we love to look at life as like this puzzle that like mm. we're solving always in our mind. And mm. oh, what is the meaning of life? I want to say it's to feel good and to talk to people. Um, mm. But like, actually, I think it's love. Um, mm. And yesterday, one of the things I thought was like, I shouldn't be a sales coach. I should be a love coach. And we'll see how oh. long that thought stays. Um, <laughs> mm. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give it a little bit more time to germinate. Um, but yeah, I really do think it's love. And not like mm. romantic love, but love of self, love of life, love of plants, love of Zoom. Mm. 
love of everything. What about you all? On the side of love, I would say connection. Mm -hmm. And being who I am too, probably creativity as well. Like that, that's the meaning of life. Creativity, mm -hmm. connection, love. Yeah, it, it ties in because I think if we're if we're self actualized and we we are creative, right? Like if we if we tap into what makes us passionate and and to your point, actually, Santa, um, I think like the best salespeople are the ones that emit the most love, right? Because like you love your clients, you love your partners, you love your coworkers, everyone else around you, and that love, the energy actually causes you to you know ultimately like have more like have more success right so in a way like i mean you are a love coach it's just yeah. i guess if you if you if you introduce yourself as that people might kind of give you a weird look but <laughs> you are a love coach <laughs> deep down deep down it's all about marketing <laughs> yeah but I, I like what you both said i think yeah connection and love like i think at least for an enfp like i find when i'm the happiest is when i'm like building like deep intimate like friendships you know whether it's my men's group or do accomplishment coaching or you know when i'm having these like really like vulnerable conversations and um just sharing that with you know with other human beings right it gives me a lot of fulfillment in life heck yeah it's not money money's great and i want lots of it but <laughs> i only want it if i have it with connection and fun and love I agree. Yeah. And also, like, I, I truly believe that money comes when I have those other things. Mm. Mm. Like, money is more of an outcome rather than the thing. Um, Love it. So when I'm feeling connected, connected to other people, connected to my vision of my life and everything, that's when yeah. anything is possible. <laughs> anything is possible and lots mm. of money as well. So that's, that's like a... <laughs> Like, there's no uh, other way <laughs> in those moments it, it's no so way. true like when i was more focused on the money actually it was like the opposite because i was like relating to it like this far away thing that is like unobtainable mm -hmm. instead of now i'm just i feel like i'm just more in alignment with like who i want to be and who i know myself to be and money just kind of just comes like so much more readily available and it's like weird right it's like almost doesn't make any sense but i think it's just money is just coming because like i think i'm just loving myself more and ultimately you know when i when that happens like i feel like it's it's uh just like an ex money is just like an expression of who i am you know whether it's to my nonprofits or supporting other initiatives like it's just like an expression of me oh yeah that what you just said was money <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, sharing that. That's that. That's a, yeah. I think that's a good place to wrap up. There's no, nothing else that we could say that will top that ever. So, <laughs> oh my well, maybe we could do like a quick round of acknowledgments. I think I think that's an ENFP ENFP thing to do. <laughs> I don't know about you, but that was my favorite part about uh, accomplishment coaching weekends. <laughs> It was most people's least favorite part. Yeah. So I was like, yes, give it to us. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'll, I'll go. I'll acknowledge. <laughs> <laughs> and it's seeing people squirm in their seat while you acknowledge them. Like, there's so much joy in that, too. So oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Should, let's, do, I... let's acknowledge. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. What were you going to say? I was going to say, let's acknowledge Davidson first. Oh for holding the space yes Davidson, i really want to acknowledge you for like having 116 episodes what <laughs> like, that's it's a miracle amazing. um it's not a miracle you made it happen that's your creativity right there you know not only are you doing this podcast but there's so many other things in the world that you're bringing to to people um, and I know because I know a lot of times people come to you and ask you for like coaching and ask you for your help and everything. Um, so thank you for being service in the world and for being such a bright light. Oh, thank you, Jackie. You're welcome. <laughs> Davidson, 
I would love to acknowledge you for being the textbook ENFP, the one that like everyone loves, like the super social, outgoing, fun, super connector in a thousand things, super smart and very heart driven and impactful. Like I just look at you and I always think how in the world does he do the things that he does? Like he is everywhere and just like, man, a super producer. So thank you for your impact on the world and just for like doing it with a smile and so much love. I'm so proud to share the same personality type as you. Thanks for representing. Aw, thank you, Santa. You're the best. <laughs> Sweet. Who wants to go next? <laughs> I'll take some. Give me some love. Yay. <laughs> Do you want to go first, Santa? Yes, I was I was leaning into two minutes. <laughs> oh my gosh. Jackie, I don't know where to start with you because I have so much love for you. You are a soul sister, meaning you see everyone's soul and you love everyone and you connect with everyone and you see the best in everyone. And you are such an amazing coach because you hold the space for every single person that comes your way and you treat them with so much love and compassion, which is what every person deserves. So thank you. And you're so creative. Oh my gosh, between ceramics, furniture design, graphic design, coaching, tea, podcasting, like, yes, girl, you do you. Go out there and make your impact. Thank you so much for sharing who you are so openly. It was so much fun to do this with you. Oh my God, let's do it again. Oh my God. I love it. I love all the love. It's amazing. <laughs> yes, Jackie. Oh my God. It's it's just crazy. I, I remember like when, when I saw you at the Summit of Greatness in Columbus, Ohio, and how excited we were to see each other. <laughs> like classic ENFP, like energy. But yeah, I, I think what's unique about you, like even being an ENFP is like, you're just so creative and then you also have the ability to explore like inner like inner right so i feel like that's that's unique um because like you are tap you are able to tap into your your inner child like your your creativity and you hold space really well especially for an enfp like i'm not <laughs> you know i feel like sometimes that's hard for us to kind of like you know hold be able to hold space and do it like willingly you know um but yeah, thank you so much for your friendship and your consistency that it's crazy that we've been meeting every like every other every other week for as long as we have. Like that's I, I think that's also rare for an ENFP. <laughs> so thank you for your commitment to like accountability, fun, uh, friendship, uh, relationship, connection and and, you know, the, the space that you hold for us to be able to like truly uh, clear and, and, and complete and get everything out of you know out of the space so that we could be our our best selves oh i'm feeling in the middle of like wanting to cry and i can't stop smiling at the same time <laughs> thank you both uh -huh. cry 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 <laughs> i will i will uh -huh. or can i acknowledge you santa yeah. oh, santa you said the word soul sister i love that because Honestly, you are soul sister. You are someone when uh, I just know if I'm having a bad day, I can go to and immediately my mood will just change from the first few words that we say to each other. Um, and we're able to have these like really deep conversations about um, different topics and, and really like loose each other up and get each other really excited. And I feel like with you, ideas are limitless like you just have so many of them and you know your talent too in the world um your ability to be able to really communicate with someone um and have them understand is something i have always admired and mm -hmm. constantly i'm like teach me some of that please because that is amazing um what else can i say about you i mean like you are pure love too. I really always feel that like pure love from the moment I ever met you to till now, you know, and um, one of the other things I really want to acknowledge is your growth through this entire time. Um, the last two years has been 
such a ride, right? There's so many things that have happened, not only in the world, but also to your life. And I just, watching you navigate all of it with such ease and grace and beauty um, and wits and smarts and brilliance <laughs> has just been so touching um, that I get to be part of that journey with you. So thank you for being part of my life. <laughs> Oh my God, Jackie, thank you so much. I, I have no words, just tears. Thank you. Oh, I love the love oh, fest. Wait, this is how we end all of our uh, <laughs> Zoom calls. Whenever we have Zoom calls, we give each other Aww, like, <laughs> That's so sweet. Oh my God. I don't know, do you guys also love hugs as well? Oh my God, it's, it's life. <laughs> Everything. Yay, I get to I get to acknowledge you, Santa. Oh my god. Okay, I'll try not to cry. <laughs> um honestly, like you taking over like um you know, our lease like has meant the world in terms of like just the giving space for me and Sammy to really grow as like the hard it was probably the hardest thing for for me to kind of commit to this relationship and kind of like you know I think what's predictable for me is like being in New York City and kind of like not committing and not settling down and kind of just dabbling and basically not making that a priority so thank you so much for that like it really it's hard to communicate like how much that has given us the space to grow but beyond that because that's more about me but <laughs> um, I, I want to acknowledge you for like the, the big heart, the big gigantic heart that you have for everyone that is a part of accomplishment coaching uh, BNI you never say anything negative about anyone um, and that says a lot about your character um, and for coaching like one of my best friends like you know she she's doing really well and, and it's it's awesome to see her thrive like with you as her coach um, and also like the love that you bring to everything that you do right from the doorman the drive like your neighbors like the communities you're a part of um yeah like you're you do it with like ease and grace and just like a natural um you know like everything is a choice right like nothing ever seems like it's like forced like it's just easy with you mm -hmm. so you know others can feel comfortable to to be themselves and, and you celebrate people so well um and that's a that's a beautiful thing so thank you for just being you oh my god i am gonna cry thank you so much Rosa. and can i just comment on the first thing that you said which is like you were like thanks for taking over my apartment so that like it helped me and sammy grow and I like always like every day I'm like thank you Davidson for letting me have your apartment be or not letting but letting me take over your lease because like it has just been such a growth spurt for me and it's just so cool that it was a win-win oh my god next is a space between me and Jackie we're gonna get a, a creative space we're speaking Ooh. into existence now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm soon I'm gonna be working in a co-working space too, so I'll be I'll visit you guys a lot. <laughs> oh my god! It's all happening. Oh my god. We could do this this next one in person. That'd be fun. <laughs> I'm having a heart attack from happiness. <laughs> just the thought of it. <laughs> Wait, I was just thinking. Oh my god, we should like just post like on all of our socials like who's an enfp and have like an enfp hangout like oh happy hour goodness. that would be insane <laughs> that would be the rowdiest freaking party <laughs> oh my god we would never go home no <laughs> no but hey it could be a good opportunity for all of us to get more clients you know we can be like the enfp coaches you know that'd be yes. dope let's, let's make this happen this is the best idea any of us have ever said <laughs> For anyone watching, this is exactly how it goes. <laughs> we're like, okay, we're done. Oh wait, shiny object over here. <laughs> yeah, but I'm excited. So yeah, we'll we'll definitely um, do round two. Uh, it'd be good next time. Maybe we can kind of go read some of the, or we can talk about our favorite ENFP celebrities or people, and then we can kind of like, so we can dig even deeper to like the 
you know, maybe one monitor we can have like the re and then we can kind of go through it and kind of talk about it like in more depth. That'd be cool. Good idea. You're trying to put too much structure around this game. <laughs> I'm not sure I like it. <laughs> Uh, we'll just get on and talk. <laughs> okay, or we could do that. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. That's a good idea. Well, we can just talk about our favorite ENFPs, like celebrities, and what it looks like to truly tap into that at the highest, like mm -hmm. self actualization and the success of that. I think that'd be interesting. That's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we'll go with that instead. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh well, I love you both, and I hope you have an amazing uh, rest of your week. And yeah, excited for round two. Oh my god, air hugs! Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> uh, I don't think I've ever laughed this much in uh, any, any of my podcast episodes, so that's great. Oh my god, this is so funny. <laughs> oh. My... <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh actually another question do you guys also have hard time a hard time like hanging up are you guys like oh you hang up first no you hang up first like oh my goodness. Totally. literally this is why jackie and i are on the phone for four hours yeah we'll tell each other oh we have to go eat dinner or oh i actually need to use the restroom like okay let's go use the restroom and come back and talk <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, let's eat dinner together right now <laughs> oh my gosh all right well it sounds like davidson you actually have to hang up now yeah yeah okay take care everyone <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> see y'all later <laughs>